<laughs> it's standing in for red blood cell. Have you ever heard blood typing before? Mm -hmm. okay. what, who, who knows their blood type? Okay. Which, which blood type? O positive. O positive. All right. So we hear things like this. O positive. There's another one. Somebody else will hear. O negative. O negative. All right. That's mine. Uh, oh, another O positive. Okay. Good. B positive. B positive. That is. Dude, B positive or B negative is the rarest. B, B positive? Okay. Who else? Who else? A positive. We're getting there. We've got almost all of them. Anybody else different? My boyfriend's A B positive. A B positive. Okay. Right. Do you know yours? O positive. O positive. Oh, that's that's a, that's that's good for you. Okay. Um, okay. Good. So we know what these names. We, we know the names. If you know your own blood, that's good. Um, can anybody get anybody's blood? No, okay, so there's got to be some kind of compatibility issues there. Okay, so it goes like this. The A, B, and O, those are glycoproteins. Cell surface glycoproteins that extend out of the surface of a rib blood cell. Okay, And we have an A type. We have a B type that branches. And we have an O type that is truncated and actually doesn't extend out of the cell. There's an O. And the positive and negative over here, this has to do with the RH. So we'll do ABO there. And then the positive and negative, that's something called RH, which is, uh, actually stands for. Rhesus factor. It's a type of monkey. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm not going to put the RH up there right now. That's a different glycoprotein. It's not one of the ABO markers. This is a different one. So let's just talk about this. This is genetically controlled. And I'm not going to get into all describing genes right now. We're just going to lay down the basics. You have genes that control simple traits. Usually they code for proteins. And you have two of every type of gene. Okay, they occur in pairs. Mendel came up with that and he said, genes occur in pairs. So the genes, we usually say I, or immunoglobulin, I, and we call that IA, IB, or IO. And these occur in pairs. So we can have two IAs, we have two IBs, and two IOs. Or, we can have all the combinations thereof. We can have IA, IB, or we can have IA, IO, or IB, IO, the common between those. These are what we would call genotypes. So for now, what am I trying to tell you? That the IA is the name of a gene, and that they occur in pairs. Follow that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now there are names as if you've ever studied genetics before. If they have the, if they have two of the same type, that's called homozygous. If they're different, that's called heterozygous. And at this point, I'm not going to hold you responsible for knowing those terms. We'll do genetics a little bit later in the course. Um, but what is worth mentioning here is this phenomenon. Okay. A and B are co-dominant. dominant to O, which means dominance and recessiveness means that if you have a dominant gene, it is always expressed. That's what dominant means, it is always expressed. Recessive means that it is only expressed when there is not a dominant present, okay? In other words, the only way you can get O expressed is this guy, because there's no dominant present. So then that one is expressed, that one shows up in your That's phenotype. Like a recessive gene? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so o, o is recessive to A or B. A and B, however, are co-dominant. They're, they're on equal footing. So when they're together, like in IA, IB, they're both expressed. So that would be a third type over here. So now we could, we could match up the genotypes to the different pictures I drew up here. 
what would be the what would be the genotype of this one? Yeah. Type A blood. Yeah. It could be either of these. It could be either of those. Well, I suppose in truth I should put Joe in there as well. But to show up as type A, since the only thing that matters is what's sticking out here, I'll leave that out because that confuses things. Um, IAIA or IAIO would both be type A blood. Okay, either of those genotypes. IBID, IBIO would both be this one. Type O, we already said, and I won't draw an error over this, I'll just say number three here. And finally, this guy down here, that's number four. It's the only way you can get those. So that's an introduction of how the genetics of it work a little bit. I'm not gonna ask any questions on this right now. Might use it again later when we do genetics. I'm not gonna ask anything about the genetics right now. What I wanna get to is determining your blood type. And for that, we have to discuss the concept of an antibody. Antibody versus probably some of the most misunderstood concepts in all of biology. <laughs> An antibody is a protein that your body makes okay, that recognizes foreign material. That's what an antibody is. Antibody is protein, or proteins we make that bind to or recognize. Oh, this is one I always spell wrong, foreign. E-I-G-N. E-I-G-N. Oh, this bothers me. Proteins we make bind to foreign particles. Antigens, then, are the foreign particles. So what happens when an antibody meets an antigen? That's the question, okay? So here you got an antigen, here you have an antibody, it comes and binds to it. If that happens in your body tissues, it forms what we call an immune complex, and it usually becomes insoluble. It becomes insoluble, it clumps together, we call that agglutination, okay? When the antibody binds to an antigen, they clump, and we call that agglutinating. Now it's not the same thing as clotting. Clotting is a very different reaction cell base, and we'll talk about that in lecture on Wednesday. Um, but when it agglutinates, it forms a precipitate, and it will crash out a solution. Now, I know most of you took Bio 1100, and we do some labs like this, where we make some solutions, and we look for a precipitate forming. Specifically, I can think about when we take um, silver nitrate, and we combine it with sodium chloride. Okay? That makes silver chloride, which is insoluble, and it forms a milky white precipitate. That's exactly the same kind of thing that happens here, but using larger materials like proteins. So when an antibody recognizes an antigen, it makes an immune complex, it becomes insoluble and it precipitates, and we can see that, okay? So what we do is we take a blood sample and we treat it with antibody, okay? And if the antibody matches the antigens on the blood cells, these things are the antigens. If an antibody matches those, it makes an immune complex and it clumps. So let me say that two more times so you follow this, okay? This is artificial. This does not happen in your body. This is something we do artificially, okay? We take purified antibody to those antigens. We take a blood sample and we drip the antibody into the blood sample. And if the antibody finds the corresponding antigen, it forms an agglutination complex. It precipitates and we can see that. If the antibody doesn't find the matching antigen, it doesn't form a complex, and it doesn't form a precipitate, okay? So what's the significance of seeing clotting when you're doing blood typing? It means that the antibody matches the what? Antigen. Antigen. Okay, so if I had a little vial here that said antibody A, 
and I put it in a little well and I saw the blood clump. What would that tell me about the blood? It had what on it? It had antigen A. So that means that that person would have type A blood. Okay? So this is what it looks like when you do this in a little microtiter dish. We have a dish that looks like this and it has three wells in it. And one says A, one says B, and one says RH. Okay? And I take a drop of blood and I put it in here. And I treat with anti a antibodies. That's how we refer to that. We say anti A. That means antibody to A. And I put that in well A. And after a little while, I see some clumping. I see some precipitate. That tells me that person has type A blood. Okay? If I do the same thing down here in B, and obviously it's smooth like that, no clumping. So okay, we'll put it clumps then type A blood. Down here, if no clumps, then what? Then not B. <laughs> okay. It doesn't clump, that tells you it's not B. It could clump. If it clumped in B as well, now that would be I'd have to put anti B in that well. Don't put anti A in it, put anti B in there. If that clumps in that well, then that tells you it's also B, which is okay, because A and B are codominant. You can be A, B. We had somebody in here that said they were A and B. Um, okay? If I get no clumping, all right, if it doesn't clump in A or in B, so I treat it with anti-A, no clumping, I treat it with anti-B, no clumping. Then you're type O. Then you're type O. I can't treat with, a, with an anti-O, because O doesn't come outside the cell. I can't, I can't, there is no such thing as an anti-O. So you have to deduce O from no clumping. Finally, then, that just leaves us with the RH. The RH is a different type of protein. I'll make this just a squiggly. So if you have it, you're positive. And if you don't have it, then we, then we call that RH negative. And we don't say the RH, we just say positive or negative. So for that one, over here, we would put in anti-RH, and again, no clumping. That would mean RH negative, and if it clumped, it would be positive. Now if you're taking notes, do you have that written down? You got it in a way that you can look back and reference it? All right, so you're gonna do this experiment today. We have some fake blood back there. We have some fake antibodies. You're gonna take a blood type. You're gonna put it in three wells. Same blood type. You don't know what it is yet. You're gonna put there like Mrs. Green, Mrs. Brown, you know, stuff like that. You're gonna put it in the three wells. And then you gotta have the three vials of antibodies. You have to have anti-A, anti-RH, and anti-B. You put in two drops of the antibody, two drops of the blood. That's all you need. You really can do it with one, but two works a little bit better. So you put in two drops. You drop in the anti-A, you take a fresh toothpick, a little plastic toothpick, and you stir it a little bit, and you set that aside. Then you put the anti-B in the second well, which is labeled B. But that's got the same blood sample in it, right? So if you're using, say, Mrs. Green, I think it's Mrs. Green, you put Mrs. Green's blood in all three wells, but only anti-A in the A well, anti-B in the B well, and anti-RH in the RH well. And you do not cross those three. You don't use the same toothpick, okay? In immunochemistry, if you cross those things, you're gonna get a cross reaction. So you have to be very, very careful not to do that. Um, and then you have to let it sit and stand for about 15 minutes and you come back and look at it. If you see any change, we're gonna call that precipitation, okay? A couple of them get real crystalline, and those are obvious, but the B1 in my experience just gets a little cloudy. It doesn't really crystallize. So if you see any change, you just call that agglutination and it means that matches that, that type, okay? That's how you do the procedure. So look, on the test, I always do this. There's always one of those trays out there, usually maybe two trays, and you have to tell me the blood type just from looking at this. This should be easy. You look at it and look, if there's no clumping, it's O negative. If it all clumps, what would that be? If it clumped in all three? That'd be A positive, A B positive, right? If it clumped in just the B, B negative. It's positive if it clumps in RH, it's negative if it doesn't. Okay, if it didn't clump in A or B, but did clump in RH? O positive. O positive. 
if it doesn't